Ever feel like the creative well has run dry just when you need it the most? If you're in the print-on-demand game, you know that hitting a wall during the fourth quarter can be a killer. It's crunch time, the busiest, most crucial part of the year, when your designs need to shine. But what happens when inspiration just isn't there? Don't worry, it happens to the best of us, but here's the good news. In this video, I'm going to share a simple yet powerful way to crush that designer's block and keep your ideas flowing, even when the pressure is on. Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to stay productive and create amazing designs, no matter what. So let's jump over to my PC and get started. Let's go. Okay, so whenever I find myself experiencing graphic design block, particularly during the fourth quarter, the first thing that I like to do is I like to jump onto any online um, platform like Amazon or TeePublic or even Etsy or Pinterest and basically just like to do some initial searches just to get the ideas flowing. And it really shouldn't take that long to do. Sometimes when you find the first thing that really grabs your attention, that's the one that you wanna go for, because more often than not, anything that comes after that is just basically gonna be a waste of time and you end up going back to the first one anyway. So jump onto a platform like Amazon and just key in something simple. For example, I've keyed in funny expression shirt. Okay, and we're gonna hit enter. And basically all I do is I just go through the shirts and see what grabs my attention. Now, I already went through this exercise. It really didn't take me that long. I found one that really resonated with me, and this is the one that um, came up. I speak my mind because it hurts to bite my tongue. So it's a bit cheeky. It's a real in-your-face type design, and I thought, wow, it's really simple. It's just a bunch of text with a line. I'm sure that I could probably create something even better than that, and even more importantly, I could probably use this as a template to create other expressions that are similar in nature but not necessarily pertaining to mind and tongue which will allow me to be able to create a bunch of designs that I can upload to my print-on-demand shop and in fact what I did was I hopped on to ChatGPT and this is the prompt that I use I found the following expression I speak my mind because it hurts to bite my tongue all the time can you please generate a list of 15 other expressions that are not carbon copies of this expression but use the same style and cheeky tone as this one so as you can see in this prompt i actually specified what the expression was that i found i gave it a number for it to come back to me with in terms of the number of expressions you don't need to do 15 you can do 10 you can do 5 you can do 20 the number is irrelevant so long as you get chat gpt to start issuing you some expressions so that you can see if you are on the right track and as you see here, I got some really great expressions that I really absolutely fell in love with. I dance to my own beat because following the rhythm gets boring. I color outside the lines because the world's too great. So they're really motivational. They're really inspirational. And basically, this is what you need when you find yourself in a rut. We're experiencing a graphic design block. You need motivation. You need inspiration. You need to light that fire within you to start getting the creative juices boiling and flowing again. So now having these expressions in hand, it's now time to head over to ideogram in order to create these typography type of designs now you might ask yourself why are you using ideogram well i'm using ideogram because it is one of the few platforms out there that more often than not really gets you know the spelling of words and the syntax of my expressions of whatever text that i want to include in the design done correctly it's not a perfect system it does make a few mistakes but given the fact that they give you a number of free credits to create designs with every single day, it's a real go-to platform for me to use. It's one of the tools that I use in my arsenal. Now, before we head on to Ideogram, I just want to share with you um, the template prompt that I created, which I'm going to share with you. I'm gonna have it in the description of this video so that you can copy and paste. It's really relatively simple to use, but you know it can really be a lifesaver when you're staring at your screen wondering, okay, what am I gonna ask Ideogram and what order am I gonna place things? So by having this template, half of the work is done. All you need to do is just key in the expressions and a few other things which I'm going to show you now and you're good to go. So let's head over to a Word document here. Okay, so here is the prompt which I'm going to be providing in the description of this video. So it reads, a vibrant and colorful design against a black background. It's very important that you include a black background because one, it'll be easier to extrapolate. Some people like to use, you know, for a black t-shirt, but more often than not, by using black t-shirt, um, Ideogram or any of these other image generating platforms will give you like a t-shirt mock-up which makes it even more difficult to extrapolate. So let's keep it nice and simple and just state a black background. 
It prominently features a statement that reads, and you will see this is where I've keyed in red, that is what you have to change, okay? Insert statement, make certain it's within quotation marks. It's super important, guys. If you put in your statement and you don't put the quotation marks around it, chances are Ideogram is not really going to know exactly what it is that you want, and it'll probably generate a lot more mistakes than actual designs that you can actually use, okay? So make sure that it's within quotation marks. Use the following color scheme for the text. Key in the name and hex codes of the colors you want to use in this design. You might be asking, Brian, what hex codes am I going to use? Where am I going to get them from? Glad that you asked. I'm going to show that to you in a few moments. Let's just finish the prompt. The text is decorated with various design elements such as, and here you want to indicate what elements you would like related to the statement. Add any additional requirements to the aspects of the design if necessary, but this part is optional. So where are you going to get your colors and hex codes? Well, if you've been following my channel for some time now, you know that I'm a huge fan of the website schemecolor.com. So this is scheme color. For those of you who have never used it before, basically you're going to key in whatever topic that you want to search. As you can see here, the last search that I did was pertaining to the keyword neon. So whatever color palette scheme color has embedded with the word neon, you're going to find it here on the web page. And as you can see here, we've got quite a number of different color combinations pertaining to neon and there are multiple pages for you to select from. So you're basically spoiled for choice with respect to color schemes. Now let's assume for a moment that we're going to use neon culture over here. So what you're gonna do is you're going to click on that and this information here, I mean, you've got the colors with the hex codes at the bottom, but that will take you a very long time to copy and paste everything into the prompt. However, down below, Scheme Color gives you a bit of a summary here, and this is where you're going to get all of the information in one simple copy and paste. As you can see here, it says, the Neon Culture Color Scheme Palette has five colors, which are, and obviously you've got the names of the colors and the hex codes. Now, if you want to use all of them, all you need to do is click on the first, uh, color name and then just highlight right till the bracket of the last hex code. We're going to right click, choose copy, and now we can go back into the prompt and paste them over there. So let's go back to Word and where it says here in red, you want to highlight all of that and then you're going to right click and just choose this paste, keep text only. So now in terms of the statement, let's head back to ChatGPT and what we're going to do is we're going to choose this one here, number 10. Um, I stand tall because shrinking to fit in isn't an option. So we're going to copy everything within the quotation marks. No need to copy the quotation marks because we already have that in the prompt. And we're going to click on the first open bracket. We're going to highlight all of that right up to the last bracket. We're going to right click and we're going to choose the icon here to keep text format. Now, in terms of elements, so... This is the part where it's going to change depending on the quotation that you're going to use, on the expression. So if we're doing, I stand tall because shrinking to fit in isn't an option, that's basically motivational and inspirational. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in inspirational and motivational icons. Uh, we can do stars. We, oh, make sure you spell it right. We can do ribbons. These are the sort of typography icons that one normally sees. Um, and then basically anything else that you feel that you want to include into that, all right? You can actually leave it blank and, you know, put it in the hands of ideogram to come up with something. Sometimes it works well, other times it doesn't. It's basically a hit and miss, so you can try it if you want to. Or you can just go ahead and type in inspiration and motivational icons, stars, and ribbons. Or you can go ahead and ask ChatGP and tell it, you know, okay, what kind of design elements would you include in a typography type of design that has the following expression, I stand tall because shrinking to fit in isn't an option. Then you just copy that and place it over there. Once you're happy with the prop, now this add additional requirements is not necessary, so we're just gonna copy, we're gonna highlight that, we're gonna delete it. Now I'm gonna hit Control A on the keyboard to select all, Control C. Now we're gonna click in the box to actually paste the prompt. So we're gonna right click, make sure you do it properly, Brian. There we go, play, paste this plain text, all right? So now we've got the prompt. Now, before you click on the generate button, you want to make sure that a few things are keyed in properly. All right. First of all, magic prompt. You want to make sure that that is toggled as on. In terms of aspect ratio, you want to make sure that you select 9 is to 16. That way, when you're transferring the design into platforms like Canva or Photopea or Photoshop, 
or whatever you know design program that you are using it's a lot easier to modify a design that has an aspect of 9 to 16 on a canvas size that's 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels. So make sure that if you are new to the print-on-demand business, you want to make sure that you select 9 to 16. Visibility, if you are using the free version as I am, you have no other option but to leave it on public. Again, that really doesn't bother me. A lot of people say, well, aren't you scared that people are going to steal your designs? You know what? There are so many designs being queued up on a daily basis that the likelihood of somebody actually coming on with the intention of wanting to steal one of my designs when I happen to be on is negligible. Still, if you want, you can get a subscription to it so that you'll be able to toggle private and you're good to go. Now, recently, Ideogram has come out with Model 2.0. I obviously have that toggled on, but if you want to use one of the previous versions, just click on the down arrow, and then you got 1.0 or 0.2. You might actually get something good out of it. You know, you give it a try if you want to. That's totally up to you. Color palette, I'd leave that blank. I don't do anything to it. Okay, now in terms of rendering, it's set to default for the free version, the seed number, and the negative prompt. Again, if you're using the free version, you can't really make any modifications. But again, as I said earlier, that's never really gotten in the way of me creating any designs. So once you have everything keyed in properly, just click on generate, and obviously you wait for Ideogram to queue up your designs and obviously to create them. And it will give you four options that you can select from. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video right now, wait for it to come up. It takes maybe about a minute or two, and then I'll be back to show you what it has generated. Okay, and as you can see, Ideogram has come back to me with the four versions. I'll just click on the icon at the top here for my images so that we can actually see all four of them launch. And look at what we have here in front of us. Okay, so again, like I stated earlier, it doesn't always get it right. You might actually find one or two of the designs, as is the case over here, where you're going to find a spelling mistake into it. But again, you know what? One out of four or two out of four, that's still great odds in terms of the amount of time that you're saving trying to create this design on your own. So the first one here, there's a lot of gibberish in it, so it's really not viable in terms of a design option. The second one, I stand tall because, because it repeated because twice, it re repeated fit in again, so definitely that's not an option for us. However, number three and number four, I stand tall because shrinking to fit in isn't an option. We've got two designs out of the four, which are absolutely usable. They're really great. They're bold. They have some great color schemes based on the hex codes that we gave. Again, it's not always going to use all the hex codes that you put in, but again, that's okay. You're just directing ideogram in terms of where you want it to go with respect to the colors. The last one here, there is a little bit of gibberish at the top and at the bottom, but again, those are really easy to delete, to get rid of in Canva, PhotoP, or any of those other image editing software programs that are out there. So let me show you very quickly three other designs that I created based on this, just to give you an idea here. So here's the first one here. I color outside the lines because the world's too gray. And in this particular case, we've got four really great design ideas here. And as you can see here in caps, those are the additions that I put to the template. So again, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to rack my brains in terms of what I'm going to use and how I'm going to go about doing that. Okay, so the next design, I danced my own beat because following the rhythm gets boring. As you can see here, we got four really great designs over here. Um, just taking a quick look over here, there are no spelling mistakes whatsoever that I can see here. Now, in terms of the prompt, obviously a vibrant and colorful design against a black background. Now, in terms of the colors, again, I went on to skin color and I actually typed in the word autumn. The color palette that I selected was called Simply Autumn. So when I clicked on it, there you go. We've got the information right over here, which I just copied and pasted into the prompt. All right. Now, in terms of the icons to include here, the text is decorated with various design elements such as falling leaves, a pumpkin and a cinnamon stick. Now, if we take a look at the last one over here, which I think is the best one out of all form, we really stuck to the color scheme that I actually embedded from Skin Color. We've got the pumpkins, we've got the fallen leaves, we even have the cinnamon sticks here at the bottom. So I really kept to the prompt that I had provided. And again, because of the fact that I've used solid black as a background, it's going to be very easy for me to extrapolate the background and use the design for my print-on-demand shop. So I certainly hope that this short tutorial has been a benefit to you, particularly if you find yourself in a bit of a rut in terms of what it is that you're going to design. And if you're not, you know, this is the video that you want to keep tucked away someplace, the link to so that you can refer to should you ever find yourself 
in a situation where you don't know what it is that you're going to design or if you need a little bit of inspiration. And guys, remember, this can be done for any niche, for any holiday, for anything out there that you want to create a topography design for. And these are the types of designs that people really go crazy for. A lot of people do like to purchase very plain typography type design with you know minimal graphics on it and loads of color so that obviously they'll be able to stand out in the crowd whenever they're walking to showcase the t-shirt or their coffee mug or any of the other print on demand items out there that you can embed this design on and hopefully land you a ton of sales, particularly during this busy fourth quarter season. So again, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button. Um, if you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a new video to my channel. And now I want to invite you to click on the thumbnail, which has just appeared on your screen right now, bent on helping you reach more success with your print-on-demand business. Thanks for watching. I'll see you there.